Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Duke virtually for the final panel discussion in our Early Decision Blue Devil Days series. Parents, I'd like to start by just extending a huge congratulations to you on your child's admission to Duke. Um, you've done an amazing job raising some pretty spectacular kids whom we cannot wait to welcome to campus in the fall as part of Duke's class of 2026. My name is Carrie Williams and I'm an assistant director of undergraduate admissions. I'm also a Duke alumna and the parent of a Duke first year student. I'm joined by a number of guests who will introduce themselves in a minute. Um, but first I'd like to mention just a few quick housekeeping details. As you know, viewers will remain off camera for tonight's event, but panelists will be visible on screen. Um, we invite you to use the chat feature in Vimeo um, to submit questions throughout the evening. We will provide written responses to some questions and others will be answered live. This Vimeo event will be recorded and a link to the recording with the transcription will be posted on our YouTube page as well as on your students online portal. Our plan this evening is to engage in conversation about what it means to be a Duke parent and to get your questions answered. We know you have many of them. This is an exciting and stressful um, time, especially if you're a first time parent sending a child off to school. Um, we will be together for about an hour this evening and we will plan to wrap up um, a little before 8 p.m. Before we begin our panelist introductions, I'd like to say a quick thank you to my colleagues behind the scenes working on event production and on the online chat feature. We have folks from undergraduate admissions, as well as from new student and family programs to get questions answered. And now um, let's meet our panelists. Um, I'd love for each of you to take a moment to introduce yourselves, your name, where you're from, tell us a little bit about your Duke student if you're a Duke parent. And then I'd love panelists to just tell in a few words how they would describe the Duke community. Um, so let's start with Sam. Good evening, everyone. Thanks, Carrie. Uh, again, welcome. Welcome to Durham. Welcome to Duke. Uh, my name is Samuel Carpenter. I'm Senior Assistant Director of Admissions um, here at Duke. So obviously I am local. Uh, I'm also a parent. Um, uh, my oldest son, uh, CJ, was a 20 grad, uh, history major, psychology minor, who went on to get his MBA and is now enjoying uh, life as an educator at an independent school uh, in Maryland. Uh, he also played on, on the men's lacrosse team here. Uh, my youngest son, Tyler, uh, is a current junior. He is currently a sociology major, uh, also playing on the men's lacrosse team. Um, so this has just been a tremendous place to raise a family and to be quite honest, I'm, uh, um, I'm excited and happy uh, that the sons have decided to attend a place where both mom and dad work, <laughs> um, as, um, as it were. So good evening and welcome again. And I'm Christy Pyland. Um, my son is actually a second year student, class of 2024. He's in the Pratt School of Engineering and currently majoring in biomedical engineering and electrical and computer engineering, also a minor in violin performance. Um, he has really enjoyed his time here. He's involved in club running. He's also a member of Something Borrowed, Something Blue, which is an acapella group. And now he's a member of Krzyzewskiville, so he'll be camping out <laughs> at night. So, But uh, when I think of the Duke community, it just, um, I think of the word collaboration, just the experiences he has had in working with other students and being challenged in research, uh, working on a bronchoscopy modeling project and working on some radar interference projects, just things I would have never imagined an undergraduate being allowed to do and just really doing things that are making a difference in the community. So collaboration is a big thing that uh, really has been nice here. Hi, I'm Art Ringness, uh, Fuqua 94 grad from the MBA program. I work and uh, reside in San Francisco. I'm a parent of Dan, who's a Pratt senior in mechanical engineering. 
and uh, Jesse, who will be joining uh, your kids this fall as an incoming freshman. Uh, so I speak, you know, from the perspective of a grad, a parent, but also as a recruiter, I've spent about 27 years recruiting from Duke, and I've got a lot of, you know, thoughts and, and, and experiences there. The words I would describe, and I think Sam stole family and Christy stole collaborative. I had those written down. We didn't cheat. I, I'm going to say challenging and well-rounded. I, I find that the environment is challenging for these kids, and it challenges them in very constructive and positive ways. But it also creates on the back end a really well-rounded student. And I, and I, I would say that certainly from the perspective of a recruiter. So uh, very exciting times. You're at the front of something that's going to be mind-blowing for your kids and, and I think for you too. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Hollis. Uh, my wife's name is Virginia. We are from Fairfax, Virginia. And our daughter, Sydney, is a freshman at the Trinity School. Um, she's highly involved in different things like death mode dance and moot court. And she's also tenting along with um, Christy's, uh, Christy's kids. Her intended major is political science or policy. Um, and I'll leave it to Virginia to describe the Duke community. Uh, so going along with the, the tenting theme, um, I would say the Duke community is basketball crazy. They call it the Cameron crazies for a reason. So. Our daughter didn't know much about basketball, but she is a huge basketball fan and more importantly, a Blue Devil fan now. Um, and I would also say that the Duke community is very welcoming and open. It's, it's a very engaging community from the moment my daughter stepped foot on campus. Um, she was brought along uh, with the engineers. Uh, she learned all types of things just in that very first week and she felt like this is her home. Um, so it was it was difficult for us to say goodbye, but we also knew she was in a great place. Good evening. My name is Grace Sullivan Zirkel. Um, I serve as the Associate Director in New Student and Family Programs, which means I have the honor of not only supporting you all for the next four years, but helping to onboard you and your loved ones um, over the course of this summer. I would say sort of in Virginia and Hall's vein, I was gonna use the word inclusive. Um, one of the things I've really valued working at Duke the last few years is that when we say Duke community, you feel on campus that that means everyone. It means staff, it means students, it means faculty, and it means our families. And that's a really exciting thing. Thank you all. Um, it's great just to have a, a diverse group of people with um, students with different interests. Um, I will add that my daughter is um, a Duke first year student. She's hoping to major in psychology. Um, she has started some developmental psychology research this semester. She dances in momentum um, and she is also tenting. So I think I probably speak for the other parents on this panel. Um, I'm of course here in Durham, but when I go to bed at night and I look at my iPhone and I see that the temperature is 28 degrees in Durham and there are little snowflakes on the weather app, I think of my child in a tent <laughs> and the mad love that these students have um, for basketball. But I think it's just a reflection of community and spirit um, that, that really um, is pervasive on campus in general. So, um, one thing I'd love to ask the parents is if you could think about something you know now about Duke that you wish you knew before your child started. Um, I'm, I'm at home with two kids and my younger daughter was so relieved when the older child got into college because she thought maybe then all of the college talk at the dinner table would stop. And in fact, it felt like it just accelerated because once she was in, there were so many opportunities and just so many things to wonder about and think about. And um, so parents, um, what's something that you know about now that you wish you knew before you sent your child to Duke? And anyone is welcome to, to chime in when you're ready. I'll, I'll jump in, Carrie. Um... I, I was really pleasantly surprised at how incorporated 
the students or my sons became in the Duke community right off the bat from, from day one. Um, as a parent, I did this with CJ. I was prepared to tell him since we live close by, obviously. Um, I was prepared to tell him that he had one dinner a month where if he wanted to come home for dinner, bring his laundry, that kind of thing. But it never got to that point. Once he was on campus, he was on campus, uh, incorporated a group of friends right off the bat, connecting with his pre-major advisor, connecting with his teachers, that kind of thing, um, to the point where even after classes had ended, he was still remaining on campus because he didn't want to leave that environment right away. He was holding out. So it was just a, a tremendous transition um, being a first year student, being incorporated in the Duke community right off the bat. And one thing that came to my mind is um, when I was in your shoes, I had this just concern. Well, how would it be? How easy is it really to get into research? Are you just kind of lucky and maybe a few people can do it? But um, Duke has a website, I think it's called Muser, that um, the students can get on and look at a variety of the projects that are offered and the research opportunities. And within my son's freshman year, he was already in the summer, he was at the uh, Bass Connections and doing a data plus research, looking at waveform analysis. And then he also did some volunteering. Then this year, he's actually working in a lab with um, cryo-electron microscopes and stuff I would have never dreamed that an undergraduate could do. And had I known that, I would have been even more excited. But I just kind of imagined that it would be just something only a few people got to do and it would be very hard to get into. And I just was really excited to be aware of all the opportunities that are offered to the students. So that's something you have to really look forward to. I would add the, the breadth of the clubs and activities in the community. There's such a rich depth to the community. So many things to involve yourself in, any passion you have. The kids, you know, I, I wish my son would have maybe delved into that a little bit more earlier on. I think freshman year is so hard just getting to know who you are and being amongst all these, you know, amazing uh, colleagues. Uh, settling in, being away from home, all those things that blend into freshman year. But I, I, I wish that there would have been some sort of catalyst to expose him and push him a little bit more broadly to explore things earlier, because by junior year, he was into all kinds of different things. But um, it is, it's a very large menu, which is exciting and maybe a little bit intimidating when they're, when they're first starting out. Um, I'll say when our daughter was first accepted, we started hearing this phrase a lot called, um, the phrase was forever Duke. And you see it on a lot of pictures or in posts on Instagram. And we thought, oh, once you're an alumni, you're forever Duke. But um, what was surprising is it's not just our student that's part of this forever Duke community. It is actually the whole family. And I didn't realize that in the beginning. Um, one example is um, I had some friends, at, uh, some co-workers who had graduated from Duke. And when I mentioned that my daughter got in, they were all over it. They wanted to introduce her to um, a restaurant owner on Ninth Street. They had a couple professors that they still kept in touch with and wanted to connect her to it. And even a year later, every once in a while, they're still checking in with me. Hey, how's Sydney doing? How's she doing with attending? Um, so it's a really wonderful community and it was, it wasn't something we were expecting and I'm not sure we would have, even if someone told us, we wouldn't have really understood what it was like. Um, but it's a good feeling. Oh. For me, I, um, I have been pleasantly surprised, um, by the communication between, Duke offices and parents when the communication with parents is necessary. And then on the flip side, I've been delighted with the communication that's just between Duke and Duke students when parents don't necessarily have to be involved. So I love that um, Duke right off the bat is 
nurturing this idea of independence and independent thinkers and students taking initiative and taking ownership for their own path. And I think it's hard as a parent um, when you wanna know, well, what's going on and what are you doing and what are you hearing and what are you choosing and what are your classes like? And those are all exciting things to hear about, but I've, I've loved um, just the sense of independence that I've seen in my daughter. And I think Duke really uh, promotes that through effective communication with kids about expectations. Um, and I think I've seen my daughter just have this sense of, you know what, I've, I've got this and I feel like she does. And I feel like Duke, Duke has her back. Um, so that's one other thing that has um, been a, a pleasant surprise to me is that there are um, amazing adults on Duke's campus who have our kids backs when we're not there to support them in person. Um, it's just a really great community of support for students. Um, so that leads me to the, the next question for parents on the panel. Can you talk about some ways in which you've witnessed growth in your student um, or ways that you feel like they've been supported by Duke or are there resources at Duke that you've seen your students take advantage of successfully? Well, one thing that comes to my mind, uh, my son has always been into music and doing violin performance. And um, he came to me uh, this year, he called one of his rare phone calls for being so busy at Duke. And he said, well, I auditioned for something. So I'm thinking, oh, it's another chamber music group or something like that. And he said, no, you know, I'm going to be in this acapella group. And I was thinking, I didn't even know you sang. <laughs> and, uh, so just in terms of expanding opportunities, you know, funny things also then uh, his freshman year, he told me, well, you know, I'm going to be busy because there's this program we're learning to paint like Bob Ross. And I, I was like, you're painting like Bob Ross. And uh, then the next day he says, and we're going rock climbing. And so just all this variety of activities where things you wouldn't necessarily expect your student to branch out in different areas. And I always say there's something for everyone. You can meet plenty of people that have interests similar to your own at Duke, but there's also so many people with a wide variety of interests that your student will just start developing those additional interests and growing while they're here. And that's been really exciting to see. Um, I, I'll kick in maybe something. My son chose to major in mechanical engineering and, and I think it was a real challenge for him. He wasn't necessarily, you know, the top kid in the class in math or, or um, I think he worked really hard and I think he was a bit blown away by the caliber of the students and, and the fact that, you know, he was amongst all the top kids from all the high schools they came from. And it was a little intimidating for him at first. But the one thing, and I'll, this word's been used, it's not a cliche, and I, again, it's, it's, I've lived it with my son, the collaboration that you see with these kids, trying to help each other out on the tough problems, trying to help each other out with tests, I see it when I interview, they help each other prepare for the interviews, even though they're competing for the same job. It, it's, it's a really unique thing, and, I, and I've mentioned it uh, to the board, and, 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 and I think it's worth highlighting here, that it speaks to the community, it speaks to the culture of the school. It is unique, I think, um, and it's special. So that's something exciting that your kids are going to benefit from. Yeah, Art, that's a that's a great point. Um, I've been um, astounded, really, um, that um, my sons have been surrounded by excellence um, across the board. Um, it might be. Uh, second nature to the male of the species, but in high school, hey, how's school? Fine. What'd you learn? Nothing. But <laughs> CJ's first semester at Duke, when he came home for fall break, it was, Dad, we're reading this book. I've met this person. We're talking about this. I'm interested in that. It's like, the world of academia opened up um, for him, which as a parent, that's what college is about. That's what, that's what you want to see. So, um, and it's been the same, it's been the same way with Tyler um, 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 as well. 
And for our daughter, again, she's, um, she's a freshman. And uh, when she first started this fall, um, you know, she, in high school, she always did well, of course, all the kids who get into Duke have done well in high school. Um, but she took a class and there was an extraordinary amount of reading and she was really struggling um, with staying on top of all the reading with all of her other schoolwork and activities. Um, so she reached out to the professor on her own and he suggested that they have I think it's called a flunch, a faculty lunch. And um, they, they went out and they talked about it and, they, and he gave her tips. And the growth that we saw in Sydney was that she was acknowledging that she needed some help and she reached out to, to Duke and got some guidance on how to keep up with, with the college course load. And, um, you know, that's not something that you know, we could have told her to do or advice that she would have heard because we're her parents and she's not going to listen to us. But coming from someone at the school, um, it really helped her. And I think um, we saw a lot of growth in just that first semester. Virginia, I'm, I'm so glad that you, you touched on this um, notion of reaching out to a professor, asking for help. Um, one of the things I am just struck by is the abundance of um, academic resources for students at Duke. And in the admissions office, we don't, we don't admit anyone by accident. Every student at Duke is there because um, in admissions, we felt like they had something valuable to contribute to the Duke community. Um, there is a book that was written by um, a former Duke administrator and a Duke professor and a Duke student on um, helping your child find success in college. And I flipped through it occasionally and I came across a note the other day that I thought was really valuable in that book. And it notes that as students struggle with asking for help, as they struggle with this notion of imposter syndrome, when they get to a top not high caliber university like Duke. Um, they need to be reminded that they were admitted for a reason, um, that they you know, are exactly where they're meant to be as students, and that when the admissions office admitted them, it was um, with the idea that the student could find success at Duke given all of the resources on campus. And so, um, I hope for parents watching today that one thing you can do as you prepare your student for Duke is to remind them that when they get to campus, they're exactly where they're meant to be and that they should take advantage of resources. Um, Valerie Ashby is Dean of the Trinity College of Arts and Sciences. And I clicked on a link in a, I think it was in a working at Duke email that we get. Um, and she talked about dealing with imposter syndrome um, throughout her career. And it's something she speaks publicly about now um, and has you know, faced challenges with. So I wonder um, if other parents on this panel feel like they got a phone call or a text from their kids at some point at Duke, sort of the panic. Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to be here. I don't know if I can handle this. This is hard. Everyone else is smarter than me. Um, so maybe that's something um, someone would like to share a few words about. I'm, I'm going to share a story. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm maybe talking too much here, but I'm going to share a, a story that just happened um, last week. Um, again, two boys, it's tough to get information out of them. <laughs> You know, uh, grades are sent to the student, you know, we never see them, that kind of thing. But last Friday, um, there was a lacrosse game on campus. And I stopped reading for the day. And as I'm walking to the ticket booth um, to go in and attend my game and see my son play, uh, a woman walks by me. And she asked, are you Tyler's dad? And of course, I'm like, okay, who is this? What, 
what have I done? Who wants to know? But it, it turns out she introduced herself. Uh, it's uh, Jennifer Luker. Uh, she's the director of undergraduate studies in the Department of Sociology. And of course, I acknowledge that I was Tyler's dad. And she said, I just want to tell you how wonderful I think he is. She has a class with her right now working on a, I think, a, a research methods class or something along those lines. But she talked about his level of engagement in class and what he's doing and how she's just enthralled in terms of working with him. And that's information that I couldn't get from Tyler. And I was just, I was just really pleasantly surprised, pleased um, um, in terms of what he's going through and how, how he is in, within the Duke community and, and within academics. And it was, it was just a moment, I guess, as a proud parent, you know, I could stick my, uh, stick my chest out at that. Hey, um, one thing, Carrie touched on a really important point, and let's just acknowledge this is pervasive. The, the pressure that these kids have gone through, probably starting sixth grade on to get to the point where they're now accepted to Duke, we didn't face that. And it, I'm older, probably than most people here, but we didn't face that growing up. It's different. It's been much more intense. And they, they, I think they've dealt with it. And it doesn't go away when they get to Duke. And it's not Duke's issue. It's an issue with elite schools in general. And these kids have been probably dealing with this their whole, you know, for a long time. I, when I got a bunch of these kids at a dinner that we were recruiting and there are already kids we want to hire. I'm like, Hey guys, how stressed are you? Hands go up. I was like, this is the cone of, of safety here. You know, everybody, everybody is stressed out. Your, your child is going to be stressed out at some point. They might get hammered on a test or whatever, even if they don't, this imposter syndrome that Katie meant or Carrie mentioned is really, really a, an issue. Just, they might not talk a lot about it, but if you listen, hopefully you'll get them talking to you about it. So impressed with Duke is that as we talk about all these issues, the number of programs that are offered to families, there has been so many, um, and I'll wait and see if my, okay, there's been so many programs offered to families where actually um, there's where one thing on um, webinars where they talk about how to promote well-being of your student or how to promote academic success or different psychological needs and just the support that the university offers. In our own personal life, we had um, we dealt with food allergies with my son who attends Duke. And so I had some concerns, obviously, going to a university where he'd be managing his own foods and uh, just understanding the level to which the dietitian and the nutritionist would work with him. And then just this year, a new program was started called the Ask Me program, where there is a person at each of the stations in Broadhead that wears a purple hat. And they're designed to um, actually be a resource for students to approach if they have food allergy concerns. So not only academic support, but there is support for the whole student for whatever their personal needs are. And that's been something that is just truly rare and I've really appreciated it as a parent. I know that um, one of the perhaps it was the last panel discussion that we had as part of this early decision Blue Devil Days series um, touched on focus, um, the living and learning seminar opportunity for first year students. And so I imagine there are parents in the audience tonight who are just trying to help their students navigate that decision to do focus or not to do focus. Um, so if there are parents um, on our panel whose kids did focus, um, Virginia, I think um, your child did focus, maybe you could just share a little bit about that experience as new parents think about whether that's the right match for their child or not. Sure. So um, the FOCUS program is uh, the fall semester, your first year. Um, our daughter did, I have to get it right, um, a program called Virtual Realities, Fictional Worlds and Games. Um, so it was an interdisciplinary program where she learned a lot about um, 
about games and culture and um, how how they interrelated and a lot of the the history behind some of the board games that that we as families play. Um, what he got out of it was, uh, of course, all the great learnings, but just a really tight group of friends. Um, so, you know, it opened her her mind and her eyes to uh, the way our cultures work, but it also gave her friends that she is now tenting with. Um, so it was a small community um, when she first walked on campus that she was able to spend a lot of time with and um, she made some great relationships out of it too. Yeah, so she's in Trinity, right? And that particular focus group that she was in, she met a lot of engineers in Pratt. So that's that was kind of neat is that she kind of got outside of her major and she's meeting all these different kinds of people. It just so happened that the person she's tenting with and the person she met at the seminar um, also lives close by to where we live. So, you know, now they have rides together back and forth. And so it's, um, it's, it's neat that um, she's uh, able to make that kind of contact. One thing that I was not aware of um, until my daughter um, considered focus, and I hope I'm not misspeaking here, um, but it's now my understanding that if a student wants to participate in the focus program, then they may do so. Students have, when they apply, I think they have to apply to four different programs. And so there's no guarantee that students will get their first choice program. But I do believe that if focus is something they wanna do, then there will be a spot for them. Um, so for parents out there, if your kids are thinking about filling out that application, um, I think they should go for it. Students can turn down a, a focus offer if, you know, a couple months from now they think differently about it, but I think it's a, it's a good program to think about. Um, my daughter was part of it, and the connections that she formed with her professors, the feedback she got from them, um, felt like it was almost like a cliche straight out of a Duke brochure. It was so um, rewarding for her. Um, she had coffee with professors to go over papers that she had written on a Saturday morning. She got really strong um, feedback and critique on her writing throughout the semester. It just made her feel like a much more confident writer. The peer review process um, in focus was really rewarding for her as well. So I don't know if, if um, Christy or Art um, or Sam, if any of your kids did focus, um, if you have anything else to add there. Yeah, um, mine did not do focus, but he did something similar in the Bass Connections program over the summer. So he was involved in a project where he was actually, it was an engineering project, but some of the students involved were not in the engineering program. So just the ability to meet people across disciplines, to work together, to solve a problem. And I think that was very exciting that there's just so many opportunities, whether it be focus or best connections. And how he found out about that was not actually on the Muser site, but I think he actually saw a poster up in one of the classrooms. And just there's so many opportunities out there just to expand your horizons. Freshman year is about getting to know yourself and breaking through, breaking ice. And, you know, this is a way for them to get nudged out of their comfort zone without you doing it as a parent. And in freshman, uh, Virginia, you mentioned like you, if you have a kid in, in, in Trinity, but they meet people in Pratt and vice versa. And Christy, you mentioned, you know, just meeting different people. It's a great way to break the ice freshman year. Before we um, open up the floor to some questions from our audience, and I'm keeping an eye on the chat, so um, keep those questions coming. Um, I do want to just mention that we have um, Grace Sullivan Zirkel with us from um, New Student and Family Programs. I know, um, because I've been in your shoes, that once your students are admitted to Duke Early Decision, you get that, that yes in mid-December, and then you are just raring to go. You are just um, 
ready to get your kids um, matched with a roommate, assigned to a dorm, registered for classes. You want to know all the things all at once. And um, one thing that we wanted to remind you of this evening is that part of the reason your kids um, did early decision was so they could kind of take a deep, deep breath and exhale this time of year and just enjoy senior year um, just take a minute to appreciate the end of their high school career before they dive into their college career. Um, so we know you have many, many questions. Um, and I wanted to give Grace just a chance to say a few words about what um, new student and family programs or what their office is doing to get ready for your students and sort of what the timeline looks like from here on out. Thank you, Carrie, for that. Yes, it's true. This is an incredibly exciting time. And um, the joy of knowing that you're coming to Duke means that you have to sit tight for a little bit right now. Um, we wait for the rest of the Duke class to be admitted and pick Duke before we start the formal onboarding process for students and families. Um, so starting in May, we will be communicating more regularly with both students and families separately. Um, so students will start receiving information in May about everything they need to do this summer, right? Applying for housing, um, orientation details, uh, registering for classes. I promise they are not behind if they don't think about that until May when they start getting that information. Um, we'll release something called the Blue Book website, which will be hopefully a one-stop shop, right, for your student. Everything that they need to do and know over the course of the summer will be on that website. And then families, we will start communicating with you also in May and sending you monthly newsletters so that both, both parts of your family can get the information you need to start to learn what is Duke, what does it mean to be a Duke student or a Duke family, um, and make sure that you're, you're both prepared for the school year to start in August. I will quickly say before I, I turn it over, um, I know that orientation is a big question. When is move-in, when is orientation? I can say definitively that we have been planning for your students' orientation since the second orientation ended last year. Um, we're very excited about some of the changes that are coming this year. Um, we are implementing some new programs and thinking about orientation week differently mostly so that as um, Art said, right, we can get students really connected. We can get them a deep sense of community before they start classes because we know if they know other people in their cohort, if they have great relationships with upper class students, then they have the resources to really succeed at Duke. They have people they can ask, I wanna get involved in X, how do I do that? Or I didn't do as well in a test as I wanted, what can I do? And so they'll have those people in their community to be able to ask those resources. So we do hope by the end of the month, we will be releasing um, move-in date. I know that that is a big thing that people want to know so they can plan their summer. And we'll be sure to share that with you all. Um, but otherwise, we hope that you can sit back and enjoy your student's senior year and know that we'll be connecting with you and your students in May. Thank you, Grace. Um, yes, I can see a flurry of questions coming in about roommate assignments and move in and orientation and um, all of those things. So keep an eye on your email inbox when the link um, to the Duke Blue Book arrives and it lands in your inbox and your students. It's very exciting to pour through that over and over again. Um, there is a question about dining and dining choices. I think the good news is that there's not really a choice to make for first year students. Um, you just get a dining plan and your student starts eating. Um, but I wonder if there is a parent on the panel tonight who can talk just a little bit about how food options work for first year students. Let's see. I would be glad to talk about that. Uh, we've had a great experience with the dining program. In fact, I was up bringing my son some tenting supplies and I'll be honest, the food is so good at Duke. I actually looked forward to coming to eat with him and going to um, the Broadhead West Union Center. And um, I was talking with my parents, I said, 
Jonathan doesn't know just how good he has it at Duke as far as the food. And she said, you know, when I was in school, it was either take it or leave it were the two choices. But there's just a huge amount of choices. The marketplace, which is on East Campus, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's food swipes. It's kind of all you can eat. Um, then they can also go over to West Campus where there's just a variety of food choices from, you know, pizzas and pastas, a wood, wood fired stove for the cooking the pizzas. There's the farm. Um, can't remember what it's called, but more cuisine that's more American style. There's barbecue, there's sushi, there's, you know, anything you can imagine. There's Southwestern, there's just a huge variety. So it doesn't matter what your particular tastes are. There's probably 10 or 15 different options of just completely different types of foods and uh, the, the variety and the ability to just find something that is different to eat each day and just easy access is really great. So um, there's two ways about it and you'll find out more in the blue book, but you know, you can have that marketplace option for the first year students where you're eating on East campus or going over to West campus where you use something called food points. So, um, but that'll be explained more in detail later. Any other, any other comments about food? While you think about it for a minute, I remember last summer just feeling anxious about it all. And when do you use a swipe in the marketplace? And when do you use your food points? And what if you run low on food points? And um, a colleague who has a child at Duke pointed out to me, Carrie, you don't have to know. Um, and I thought, oh, <laughs> that's kind of a nice way to look at it. I don't. Um, she joked, no kid is going hungry with their meal plan on campus. They figure it all out in due time. But, um, but as Christy mentioned, there are lots of options. The only other thing we were going to say is that um, our daughter, Sydney, surprised us senior year of high school when she told us she was a pescatarian, vegetarian. Veg yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of surprising. But um, we were worried that she'd get enough food at Duke with those kinds of restrictions, but she has been well fed the entire time. Yeah. She has a lot of choices. A lot of options. Yeah. She's doing great. I see a question that's come in um, about research. When should a student try to find a professor to do research with? Um, should they start seeking out those opportunities the summer before they arrive? Um, once they get to campus first semester? What, what is that timeline like? I know in our particular case, I think when you first get to campus, it's good to just explore and experience what's going on. I wouldn't be as concerned the very first semester on finding a professor, because as you start your classes and are, are exposed to just such a variety of things through either projects that are assigned, if you're in engineering, you may discover that what you thought you were interested in is not exactly what you were interested in. But um, by the second semester, particularly in our case, um, that's when you can get on that Muser site, you can start looking at projects or looking at summer opportunities. And then you'll find just by being involved with that, then suddenly doors are opening up and it becomes very easy to just get involved with other professors. The professor you were working with may have talked with another professor and then suddenly another project is opened up for you. So it's something that I had a concern as a parent. I thought it's going to be really tough to, you know, how are we going to find all this information, you know, and I wanted to manage it and I haven't been involved at all. And that's something that you know, my son has been just very relatively easy to uh, find this information on his own and develop these opportunities. So it's something that I, I would say as a parent, we can take the stress off ourselves worrying about how do we plan this out because I've taken all the notes. And, you know, when I attended these same meetings that you did, I put when he should do this, when he should do that. And I haven't had to follow that at all because it's just fallen into place because there's so many resources there and it's so easily accessible. I think part of that, part of the question, and thank you, Christy, for addressing that, was um, should I be looking for a professor to team up with this summer? And um, I was in a, in a panel discussion at some point over the last couple of years, um, maybe with um, Gary Bennett and Mary Pat McMahon, um, Duke administrators whom you'll hear from regularly as your child gets ready to start at Duke. 
And their advice to, um, to students for the summer before they start college is just to relax. This is a really, really accomplished, high, high achieving group of students who are about to come to campus in the fall. And they have kind of been in go, 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 go mode, um, as Art mentioned, since, gosh, it feels like sixth grade. And if there is ever a time in their lives to just relax and take a deep breath and spend time with friends and think about hobbies um, and just relax without the burden of any work or any ex academic expectations, it is indeed this summer, because what we hope is that your students will come to campus fully um, renewed and refreshed and just kind of ready for the next adventure. And so they will serve themselves well to, to take that, that break this summer. I know it feels like um, there's a lot to, to get done, but I think that that, is, that will be important. Um, I wonder if um, I'm keeping an eye on the clock here, I would love to talk a little bit about safety. Um, if any parents on the panel are willing to talk about how you've experienced the issue of safety at Duke um, or how your child has, whether that is um, safety on campus, walking around in the evening or riding on buses in the evening or just general COVID safety, I know that's a concern that new parents have. Yeah, so um, I'll speak on behalf of us. Uh, Chen's. <laughs> um, I kind of think that Duke found the right balance of not overreacting to COVID on the one hand, and yet having a system in place where, you know, if somebody did have COVID, they have a quarantine system. So um, my cousin, his son, has only just gotten back to school. So once Omicron hit, the school basically shut down for a month and a half or so. Um, and, you know, we didn't have that. We had senior going back, getting tested, and then starting in-person class. So we, so it seems like they have a good system now in place where they're going to handle COVID cases that inevitably arise. So we, I think it's a, it's a, you know, it's not on the one hand too safe, it's on the other hand too risky. So I, I like that about Duke. I'll just add that I think um, Duke being Duke, the medical center, the health professionals that are on campus, um, they've done really a tremendous job of monitoring and keeping students safe. Um, 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 the st international students who are here, the parents had to take a big leap of faith in terms of sending them overseas. But I, again, I think Duke has just done a tremendous job uh, with this whole pandemic. I agree. I've had I've had a a friend whose whose son had a bit of a tough time dealing with all the pressures of school and during the pandemic, and and just took some time off, took a semester off, uh, which turned into two semesters off. And the thing I'll say as an observer, with a lot of detail around it, is the school was so compassionate and constructive in dealing with the family, more concerned about the well being of the student and how things were going and what the trajectory was and offering ideas and, and just really working with the parents. That to me speaks to sort of this, this family uh, around Duke that, that, that uh, is, is pervasive across the administration, the faculty. To me, I, I, I really see that. And, it, and it's something that makes you feel uh, secure at least about the hands that your kids are in. And I'll speak real quickly to physical safety, because um, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering as far as if your students studying late at night, getting across campus, but there's a fabulous bus system. There's plenty of people to walk with. Um, my son actually does a lot of biking. So he, when he was a first year, he would ride his bike over to West Campus where the engineering is and use that quite a bit. So, um, you know, I had concerns because you're watching things going on in Durham and you're wondering, you know, what is the effects on campus? But um, it's really not been an issue as far as safety. There's a, a good support system, good network, good coverage by the university police. So that's very reassuring.
We have just a few minutes left here um, as I keep my eye on the clock. And it occurs to me that a few of us had made, have made references to our kids tenting. Um, and some of you may know what the heck we're talking about and others might be thinking, what, what does that even mean? Um, so I wonder if the parent of a tenter is willing to describe if you even know um, succinctly what, what that's about and how students get involved in that. I can talk a little bit and um, funny, a side note, I was from the other school, which will not be named, but uh, is a rival in terms of this tenting process. But uh, my son was very excited about the Carolina Duke game, you know, pulling for the uh, Blue Devils and seeing how that goes. So um, he tried to, I guess there was a trivia quiz that they had to answer a series of questions. His group didn't make it in. So they did this race to the secret spots and it was this giant scavenger hunt. And he, he was so excited. He texted me, I want to say it was like at midnight saying, we got in, you know, we're at the last of 10 tenths. And so he'll be camping outside to try to get tickets to the Duke Carolina game with a group of students where they're rotating in tents at night. And that's my understanding of it, but uh, it's something I think you have to experience if you come to Duke. So basketball is a big thing here. Even if you're not into basketball, just the camaraderie of being with the students outside is pretty neat. So. Well, well said, Christy. Um, thank you. Thank you for that explanation. Um, <clears throat> I think we are about out of time for this evening, but it's been just great to, to be with all of you. Um, I wanna thank everyone for joining us tonight, parents in the audience, panelists here on screen, all the folks who are working behind the scenes um, with our production and um, colleagues who are answering questions. Um, I hope that you will keep some of the conversations going that, that um, started tonight. Um, please follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. Um, new parents, if you have not joined the Facebook parent group yet um, and you would like to, please feel free to do that. Um, and now I hope you will check out the Duke men's basketball game in progress against Wake Forest. Um, or I told the panel before we started, I am equally excited this evening um, to watch Duke Jr. Um, Anna Mathalali on the Jeopardy College Tournament of Champions. Um, so that is on, I, I think she appears at 8.30 Eastern time. So I know people are joining us from all over the world, but, um, but I hope you will um, check that out and, and wish her some success. So Thank you all for being here. Congratulations on having just a great group of kiddos. We can't wait for them to, to join us at Duke. Thank you everyone and good night. <laughs>